Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's tech teardown, I'm going to show you guys how to replace the battery in a Samsung Galaxy S10e. Now, this phone here is my personal phone, and I had it for about a good five years now. This model came in 2019, and I think it's time for a replacement for the battery. Now, you can always tell that your phone needs a replacement battery if you begin to see some bulging on the sides of the phone, or if the phone is tends to be overheating, or it's not holding the charge that it used to when you first bought it. Now again, this phone is, as I said, it came out in 2019, so it's a good five years old. That's around the time you would expect the battery to degrade to about half or so of its capacity. Now for this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the battery using the tools that are provided in the replacement battery kit. Now the toolkit I'm referring to is this kit right here that I got from Amazon. It has replacement battery as well as all the tools necessary to do the replacement yourself. Now since this one is my personal phone, I'm going to make sure I take all the necessary precautions when installing this battery. But you know, this tutorial is for persons who are nervous about replacing their phone parts at home. And hopefully this tutorial will make you feel at ease at doing it yourself without having to spend a ton of money going to a repair person. Now the first thing of course to do is to turn off the phone. You can't replace the battery if the phone is on. The next thing you're going to do is try to remove this back plate. Now remember this back plate is made of glass, so you have to be very careful when removing it. Now as I mentioned before, this is the tool that came with the repair or battery replacement kit. Let's see what is inside first before we begin. Here you can see we have our replacement battery as well as a nice simple instruction manual if you ever lost or need assistance in terms of how and what to do. Here's the manual for you. And if you open up the box some more, you have some more tools inside here. You have some adhesives for the battery itself as well as the back plate of the phone. When you're finished repair, you want your phone to be nice and snug. Here we have some tweezers. We use these probably to remove some components or maybe the adhesive inside the phone. You have Phillips screwdriver and of course you have the different screw heads that can go with it. We have this device here that is used to pry the battery up as well as suction cup and some spacers here to help remove any components where necessary. So this is the one thing I like about these basically the replacement kits. They give you all the tools necessary but if you need more precision tools I do have my own tool kit here that I would have bought locally. If anyone needs to know where I got these tools from then I will put a link in the description below. Let's use what they give us for this particular tear down today. Now the hardest part of this repair is of course getting this back cover off. This back cover is made of glass so therefore you have to be very careful. Now usually it involves using a heat gun around the edges of the smartphone to just warm up the adhesive on the inside. But thankfully for me since the battery itself had produced some excess heat over the years my adhesive is pretty much worn out already. Now eventually I would use the tweezers here and remove some of this excess adhesive around the back plate and the size of the phone but I'll wait until the end of the tear down and battery replacement to do that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to remove this cover here. This cover houses the rechargeable coil as well as the battery itself underneath but we have to remove these screws here around the smartphone in order to get it off. The first thing you want to do is take the screwdriver, insert the Phillips screw head and get to work on removing these screws. Now I did have to remove some adhesive from some of the screws as it was blocking the actual screwdriver. So let's go. I'm going to use the tweezer at the end to just pry up the screws. I'm just loosening them here now so that makes pulling them up easier.
All right, so that should be all of the screws. Take your tweezers now and just take out the ones that can come out. And I'll do this part off camera. So as you can see, this is the last screw for a total of 10 screws all together. Let me just zoom out so you guys can see all 10 screws here. Now the next thing to do is remove this protective back cover that houses the wireless charging coil as well as the battery underneath. Now that all the screws have been removed, it just has some mild adhesive that you just have to work, work your way around slowly, but it should come up in no time. Now one thing I want to mention is that you should have a heat gun on standby when doing these teardowns but unfortunately I don't have a heat gun nor a blow dryer at hand right now so I have to do it with the grass that I have right now because I don't have any heat gun or blow dryer that I can use to free up the adhesive. So I just have to do it very carefully. Thankfully this phone is an old phone so most of the adhesive is not as strong anymore but if you are going to invest or do this as a hobby or a living you should have all the necessary tools a heat gun is definitely something you should invest in if you're going to do this for a living now one of the reasons why this back frame is a little bit harder to come off than what it's supposed to be is because i did carry the phone to get it um to get adhesive put back in it a couple years ago so the guy that put it on clearly put on extra adhesive so this back plate should come off a little easier with your phone but with my phone in particular it has some extra adhesive around it now here we have the exposed motherboard as well as the battery now that we are going to remove first thing you want to do is remove this little ribbon cable this is this gives power from the battery to the to the main motherboard and this has to be removed next now one important point to mention is that underneath the battery itself is a portion of the display so you have to be very careful when you are prising up the battery not to damage the display area underneath but there is some mild adhesive around the back of the battery. Now what most persons would do at this point would be to heat up the front of the phone in a circular fashion but of course unfortunately I do not have my heat gun so what I can do now is just try to use this end of the tool here now to just prise up the battery now I did have to go and dig deep to find this oil here dryer somewhere in storage thankfully my mom had one there so let's turn it on Alright, so let's try praising up the battery once more. So I actually took the assistance of the suction cup as well as this tool to get the battery on praise. But here you can see the battery has been removed. This is the adhesive that was around it. As mentioned before, this is part of the display you have to be careful of. Now what I want to do now is probably remove the excess adhesive that is around the battery bay so that when I put in the new battery I don't have any adhesive there around it now the company did give a replacement adhesive strip so that's why I want to remove this excess adhesive first now I admit it wasn't the cleanest adhesive removal but it was as much as I'm willing to do before I damage the display underneath I don't want to I had to be very careful getting the adhesive off so next now we have to take now the replacement battery Take it out with the package as well as apply the battery adhesive to it as well to so say here you have the battery adhesive that would of course go on to help stick it and hose it in place so now the adhesive is stuck to the back of the battery all that's left now is to place the battery back in the housing make sure it's nice and snug and finally we're going to connect the 
connector just to make sure that everything is working. So let me just get this tool once again. Um, gently. All right, so now the connector is connected. Let's just double check and see if the phone is working itself. So let me just quickly power on here quickly. Make sure everything is working okay. Ah, good. The phone is turning on, so that means it was successfully connected. All right, so I'm going to turn it off once again. I'm going to put back on this back plate, put back on the screws, and we should be good to go. All right, so this is the last screw now. I'm going to tighten this one. And that should do it. All that's left now is to put back on the back cover. I didn't bother to put on the adhesive at this time. If I need to, I could always go back and do it. There's still plenty of adhesive around here. It may not be tight, but with the case I have, at least the phone should be nice and secure. Let's put back on the back cover now. Make sure it is on properly. All right. All right, the back cover is on. Let's check the phone once more. I'm gonna let it completely boot up this time so you guys can see that it is, com it is working and the battery has been successfully replaced. This is the old battery. And there you can see the phone is successfully booted. All right, so the battery is working right now. It's showing 56%. Of course, I've got to give it a charge and see how it actually lasts over time. But here you have it. I successfully been able to replace my Samsung S10e's battery. And hopefully this video would have been insightful to some of you who want to do their own cell phone repairs at home. Just letting you know it is possible to do it on your own. You don't have to go to a um, technician to do it unless you really, really want to. You know, so you can save some money if you have to. Alright, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video.